how wonderful person and let's talk about Uranus. Uh, I mean Uranus, the beautiful, distant, enigmatic world that we don't actually get to discuss that much on the channel, mostly because the discoveries from this world are usually extremely rare. And for many decades this ice giant presented scientists with a series of perplexing mysteries. From its somewhat bizarre magnetic field to its surprisingly low internal heat and now a completely new moon. And so all of these new discoveries fueled by powerful new telescopes and quite a few sophisticated computer simulations are finally answering some of the mysteries about this beautiful planet, revealing a beautiful complex world that continues to challenge our understanding of planetary formation. And so let's delve into these new discoveries and talk about what all of this means. And of course our journey has to begin with this new exciting announcement, the discovery of a new moon orbiting Uranus. And this isn't just another data point, it's an important reminder that the James Webb Space Telescope finally allows us to see the world we could never imagine before. Because this was discovered with the James Webb with some of the first images on the February 2nd, 2025. And so here a team led by the Southwest Research Institute identified a previously unknown satellite that was barely visible in some of these images, officially bringing the total number of moons around this object to 29. And as you might have learned from the previous video in the description, we actually did have an exciting discovery in 2024, where a new moon of Uranus, known as S2023U1, was discovered by Scott Shepard and his team by using a ground telescope in Hawaii. And so now, just a year after, we have the 29th moon. This is now referred to as S2025U1. And this moon is remarkably small, approximately 6 miles or 10 kilometers across. And it's of course the size and the faintness that prevented its previous detections by missions like the Voyager 2. And as you can see from this image, it seems to orbit extremely close to Uranus. Here the distance is about 35,000 miles or 56,000 kilometers from the center of the planet. And it seems to orbit in the equatorial plane, nestled between the orbits of two other inner moons, Ophelia and Bianca. And because this moon seems to have an almost perfectly circular orbit, it suggests that it's very likely extremely old and very likely formed in this exact location billions of years ago. And so now this new moon is the 14th member of the intricate system of small inner moons, which orbit much closer to the planet than its five largest satellites known as Miranda, Ariel, Umbrio, Titania and Oberon. But here the significance goes beyond just a simple count. It actually highlights a somewhat complex relationship between the inner moons and the ring system around Uranus, with the observed dynamics suggesting a very turbulent history that, as the scientists put it, blurs the boundary between a ring system and a system of moons. And because this new moon is much smaller and much fainter, it implies that even more undiscovered complexities potentially hide in this system. But at least for now that's basically all we know about the moon and about this particular discovery. But there have been some other exciting discoveries from Uranus, including the puzzle from back in 1986. And this was from the Voyager 2 visit, where the initial observations suggested that Uranus was not emitting any significant excess internal heat. And this by itself was a somewhat puzzling discovery, because it essentially contradicted fundamental scientific understanding of how we believe giant planets form and how they evolve. All other giant planets in our solar system, such as Jupiter, Saturn and Neptune, seem to show clear evidence of internal heat, with all three objects actually radiating more heat from inside the planet than receiving from the Sun itself. But Uranus seemed to be just a little bit different, because it was receiving more heat from the Sun and was not emitting as much from inside. And in some of the previous studies and some of the previous videos from years back, this has been potentially explained as maybe the result of some kind of a massive collision that essentially reshuffled the internal structure. However, based on the recent rigorous analysis of decades worth of observations, mixed with very complex computer simulations, researchers potentially solved this mystery. Here, two independent teams have now concluded that Uranus seems to indeed emit more heat than it actually receives from the Sun. In other words, the observations from Voyager may have been just a little bit skewed. And specifically, they found that Uranus emits approximately 12.5% more heat than the total absorbed solar radiation. And though this is weaker than other gas giants, with for example Jupiter emitting 113%, Saturn 139% and Neptune a staggering 162%, here something was definitely a little bit different about Uranus. 
especially because Neptune is farther away from the Sun, so you would actually expect it to emit less. And so this suggests that something unique seems to be happening inside Uranus, and it perhaps contains a different internal structure or a distinct evolutionary history compared to other giant planets. With studies also revealing that Uranus's energy seemed to fluctuate with the changing seasons or basically every 20 years. With these seasonal variations, very likely influenced by a planet's unique off-center orbit and its highly tilted axes. But more importantly, confirming that the initial observations from Voyager 2 were potentially anomalous. Because here the flyby occurred during a period when we had much higher solar activity, which was potentially causing Uranus to behave in a slightly unusual way. But during this time Voyager observed something else that was very difficult to explain for many, many decades the magnetic field. Both Neptune and Uranus seem to have a very unusual magnetic field that's very different from other planets, and it seems to be disorganized and somewhat jumbled. And that's very likely because the magnetic field here is generated differently from other planets. Here the magnetosphere seems to be formed inside the mantle, which is mostly made out of extremely compressed ices, so basically water, ammonia, and methane. And so here, in one of the recent studies, Burkhard Militzer and a team from University of California, Berkeley, tries to explain this unusual magnetic field by once again using advanced computer simulations. And one of the main conclusions here is that, under extreme conditions deep inside these planets, a lot of substances like water, methane, and ammonia, instead of mixing, seem to separate into very distinct layers. This phenomenon is usually referred to as immiscibility. But because of these ridiculous pressures, hydrogen atoms start to be squeezed out of the molecules, mostly out of methane and ammonia, which then leads to a formation of carbon-nitrogen-hydrogen fluid. And it's this somewhat bizarre fluid that then settles below the lighter, water-rich layer that basically forms something similar to oil and water, with a hydrogen-rich layer going on top and a heavier material going on the bottom. And this water-rich layer, situated beneath the atmosphere, then starts to create a lot of convection, generating bizarre irregular magnetic fields. In contrast, the deeper hydrocarbon-rich layer seems to remain stable and resists mixing, and so it doesn't actually produce any magnetism. And while all of this was achieved by conducting computer simulations, creating these hypothetical pressures equivalent to 3.4 million Earth's atmospheres but also very hot temperatures, with the model suggesting that there is a 3,000 mile thick atmosphere, but also a 5,000 mile thick layer of water-rich fluid, followed by a very thick hydrocarbon-rich layer that extends down to the core, with this model essentially providing an explanation for quite a lot of mysteries of this bizarre planet. Right now this unusual layering seems to make the most sense. But this can also potentially explain another bizarre mystery that was recently discovered through observations with the Hubble Space Telescope. And here this is not about the planet, but about its largest moons. Ariel, Umbriel, Titania and Oberon. Now all four moons in this case are tidally locked, basically they're always facing the same way toward Uranus. Or in more scientific terms, they contain a leading side and a trailing side. And previously some of the predictions suggested that the trailing side, or I guess the dark side, should technically appear darker. This was based on the assumption that a lot of charged particles, such as for example electrons trapped inside the Uranus magnetosphere, should impact the surface and make the surface darker over time. But some of the recent observations from the Hubble Space Telescope, and especially using the ultraviolet observations, seem to have revealed something different. There was no evidence for darkening on any of the moons. And even more surprisingly, there was actually darkening on the leading sides of Titania and Oberon. Or basically these two moons were darker on the closer side toward the planet, which was completely unexpected. And at first this was kind of difficult to explain, but the researchers thought that maybe this was because of the unusual shape of the entire magnetic field. But then they realized that there might be something else happening, and this new hypothesis is now referred to as dust shielding. Here they hypothesized that the dust originating from some of the other moons seems to coat the surfaces of some of these moons with the darker particles, very likely because of various micrometeorite strikes that eject a lot of small bits into the orbit of Uranus. And over very long timescales, these tiny bits gradually move outwards and eventually settle on some of these moons, naturally on the side closest to Uranus. And so this accumulation eventually causes the surface to become slightly darker and even slightly redder. But this also potentially serves as a kind of a shield for Ariel and Umbriel, 
which is why they don't seem to show the same brightness difference. And this is not just a hypothesis because something very very similar has already been observed around Jupiter and Saturn. Here several moons seem to exchange material all the time and coat each other with a lot of different particles. But when it comes to Uranus itself, because there's a definite discrepancy between what was assumed and what was discovered, this once again implies that the magnetosphere of Uranus seems to act in ways we don't expect it to act and may actually be much less active or just way more complex when it comes to long-term interactions. And so here once again we get these new mysteries that will hopefully help us understand how the solar system evolved and why so many planets here seem to be so different. But this is also of course important for exoplanetary studies as well. Mostly because ice giants like Neptune and Uranus seem to have been discovered in quite a lot of star systems out there, with so many Neptune and sub-Neptune exoplanets confirmed in just the last decade. And so by unraveling the secrets of Uranus and Neptune and understanding how these planets work, we acquire important insights in helping us predict and analyze internal structures of exoplanets and anticipate what we're going to discover there in years to come. But naturally we're going to learn so much more if we one day have a probe going here. Ah, uh, yeah, there's a probing Uranus joke somewhere out here. Except that it's not really a joke and has been a proposed NASA mission that's still being worked on and still being assessed, but may happen in the next decade. And so there's quite a lot to look forward to in the next few years, especially as more and more discoveries are made around this planet and as more and more mysteries are solved. And so this planet that was once considered to be a somewhat featureless mysterious world is slowly revealing its complex nature and its intricate interactions with its satellites while showcasing its beautiful rings. But at least for now that's all I wanted to mention. Once we get some more discoveries or yet another moon is discovered in the next few months, we'll come back and discuss this more in some of the future videos. Until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining the channel membership that grants you early access and a few more things. Alternatively, you can also buy the Wonderful Person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.